So I had a dream last night that I misspelled everything. And I was clicking through and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. It was really embarrassing. And then, then I thought, oh, you know, I, met, I was meant to have that dream because we're supposed to walk in the shoes of our students, right? And, and feel what they feel and that anxiety and that pressure level they must experience when they have to get up in front of the class and give a presentation. So before we made the flare, and my students um, were sort of the, the backbone of this presentation because I, what I did is I put together what they shared with me. So this is really all about them, not what I do. Um, but I was told by my principal, you're going to you know, talk about five minutes. I'm like, talk about five minutes? Okay, well, five minutes, that's a series of minutes, each comprised of 60 seconds. There's five of them, and they go by in order, right? It's rapid succession, and then sit down. No, that's not what we're doing? Okay, never mind. All right, so this is integrating theater in the alternative ed classroom. But this is something you could do anywhere with any subject. So one of the things I teach my students right before we do any type of activity is the, like theater shtick. So before you do any type of performance, you got to say curtain, and then you end your scene with scene. So we put that in there just for fun. Um, once upon a time in Orange County, a group of my colleagues and I attended a workshop. It was an eight-day series of days of uh, training in, in uh, learning theater techniques to take back to our classroom. So that was the hope that we would do that. So I said to myself, game on, I'm going to do that. And one of the things we learned was um, getting kids up on their feet is really important because 59 minutes is a long time to sit in a chair at a desk and write or read or do whatever you're going to be doing based on your content. So I always try to get kids up and moving at some point, at least for five minutes. And their favorite activity that they did as a group just for fun was called patterns. And I'll send this to you if you want to. But in a nutshell, you get the kids up in a circle and they toss the ball. The first pattern, everybody has to touch the ball, don't drop the ball. And then while the ball is moving in the same successive order, somebody else in the group starts another pattern, like with calling out colors, and then a third pattern which could be a movement or a sign that you give someone, and which class could incorporate the most patterns won a prize, and it was pretty fun. So they liked that. Um, but that's not all. So we decided that uh, Tableau was their favorite group activity that led them to more writing, from small writing to bigger writing to better writing along the beginning of their writing journey. So Tableau, really quick, is you take images from any type of visual production or historical iconic area, and kids pick their groups, they pick their picture, and then they have to study the photo as if it were an essay. What does it say? What does it mean? Why does it matter? What's happening now? What happened before? What happened after? Then they each pick a role to play, and they write in their journals uh, what they think that character is called, who he or she is, what he or she might be feeling, thinking, or saying. They write the monologue, and then they have to perform it. If you've ever seen the pageant of the masters, you know about freezing into your pose. So they come up, they hold their pose, they say curtain, they speak their line, they go back into their pose. And then they can do it again and again, you know, depending on how much time you have in class. But that was their favorite group activity. Uh, on 9-11, we actually did the tableau. It was a student idea. They said we should do tableaus for the iconic photos of 9-11, and we actually did that. Um, here's a group of students um, reenacting the, the fallen firemen. Uh, what students are asked to do is often something that I have to reteach. What are we doing again? What did she say? Right? They do that in groups a lot, so I have to tell them again, oh yeah, this is what you're expected to do. So I ask them to just tell you through a series of lines what they were supposed to do in Tableau. Um, if you're teaching a novel in English literature, you could do this with any type of um, literature piece. For example, of Mice and Men, you could take still images from a theater production or a movie production. Movie stills are great to use. And then the kids could choose their character, write their line, write their monologues, and perform it. They could also switch roles. That helps deepen their understanding of character, dialogue, theme. Uh, we took the Tableau activity through the writing journey. One of their journal topics was tough decisions. Uh, identify and describe a tough decision you've had to make in your life. And as you know, Gilbert students come to us with a pretty long, arduous trek um, to get there and to return to you sometimes, or even just to make it to the graduation stage. And when they start writing their stories, a lot of emotions come out. Um, I also have had to, you know, make some reports. 
Um, but they do write, it gets emotional. Um, when they get to the point of writing their monologues, um, they have to switch roles. So for example, I've had teen moms in my class who have had to write the monologue of telling the parent you know, in their own words what they said once upon a time, and they perform that monologue, and then they switch roles and they play their, portray their, their parents and speak either the words they wish their parent had said to them or what really happened. And that can be emotional, and as a result, after doing monologues in our class, uh, we called it the pageant of the gladiators. Um, <laughs> bonus field trip, we went to the pageant. Um, we, oh wait, I wanted to go back to that. I wanted you to see on the, on the bulletin board there are the printed versions of their stories with their images that they used in Tableau. And then um, they discovered that stories are everywhere. And we also took this activity into the journalism class where journalism students took their phones and their cameras, they walked around campus. And they just took pictures of what they saw and then they used those in a Tableau to monologue activity. And some of them are funny, some are imagined, uh, some we used fiction and nonfiction depending on uh, the purpose of that day. But we learned that pictures tell stories, um, monologues make us emotional, and so on Fridays we incorporated circles. So a lot of the kids would get together, we established a community-based kind of agreement that this is how we're going to treat each other, this is what good listening looks like, sounds like, and then they shared their feelings about what they experienced, and that was pretty cool. And since September was uh, suicide Awareness Month, we also got a little bit deeper into the discussions of mental health and some of the, s the themes that we struggle with. Um, this is a poem that was born out of Tableau and Monologues and the students actually created a project, so now this has become like a project-based learning experience for them. And they are planning to publish a book with their writing, their true stories, their poems, their pho photography. And we have the first ever Polaris High School Poet Laureate and the second uh, Gilbert High School Poet Laureate, and you might recognize some of those faces because they came from Cyprus and Magnolia and Catella. Um, the journalism class project uh, that was born out of this is the gladiatortimes.com website. It's a news online news feed, so you can see some of their photos and stories there. Fundraising, boom, that always helps. And I like to start every lesson with a question and then encourage students to try to respond to that question with a deeper question. So it's not really about finding answers, but digging deeper for more information. So the question that they came up with was, what if our stories have the power to save lives? What if my poem or my story could touch a heart or a soul and stop someone from killing themselves? Oh my gosh. So they decided to take those themes and ideas and some of the topics that I saw them present were investigative reports on depression, anxiety, grief, loss, fear, you know, all the things that we all share. And from that experience, one of my students, and, and they all kind of had wonderful projects, I wish I could show them all to you, but one of my students who actually lost a parent about a year and a half ago, he thought that um, it would be really powerful to find out instead of asking the question, you know, why do people do these bad things, what if we found out what makes people happy and, and what makes them want to do good things? So this is a video that Jesse put together for his final end product. His question is what makes you happy? And I'm just going to show you a little bit of what he put together. Hold that thought. What makes you happy? What makes you happy? What makes you happy? What makes you happy? Um. What makes you happy? Um. What makes you happy? What makes you happy? What makes you happy? What makes me happy? Yeah. What makes you happy? Honestly, Jesse, you make me happy. <laughs> you? Uh, um, I don't know. I really don't. The beach. Openness. Um, freedom. Spicy chicken nuggets that are back at Wendy's for a little bit of time. 
See my mom smile. Your mom smile? Yeah. See my friends happy around me. Seeing them, uh, like the future things, like if like my accomplishments that I want to think, you know, my goals. Are, you can't be sad about the things that are happening. Obviously, senior year, you always have to keep on going, regardless. And it sounds sad, but I'm happy that it's happening. You know, 12 years of waiting just to be a senior, and that's happening. You know, it's, yeah, that's what makes me happy. Stay ready. <laughs> Makes me happy. Yeah. I make myself happy. Yeah. I make myself. That's what makes me happy. Uh, hanging out with you guys. Why is that? When and if you were ever sad, what did you do to cope with it? Search off things that I find bring a little bit of joy back. Like. Search out things that make me happy, whether it be the beach or it be going on a bike ride or just be talking to someone. Be very optimistic but at the same time be realistic about things. So obviously there's going to be a lot of bad things that happen in your life or in society wise and you just got to learn to not put yourself down through it and move on rapidly because if you stay on it you're losing a lot of your life in those few seconds and minutes or hours and if, if you have the choice to change it and you know be happy and you can do it instead of being sad because nothing's gonna solve it if you're crying for hours and no one's gonna know. Yeah. Uh, I don't usually get sad, but I would love to show you more. But for the sake of time, um, would you hit that set of lights for me really please? Um, so I just want to thank you for watching and taking the time to look at the Gilbert kids and what they can do and what they learned. Um, and then to end whatever performance we do in class, we always have to say scene. So, scene. <laughs>